Hello everyone and welcome back to the next installment of our 10.1 Raid Guides, proudly presented by Kingston Fury. This is Crazy Puck for Method and today we'll show you how to defeat the Amalgamation Chamber Encounter in Mythic Avarice. For all of our Mythic videos, we'll assume you know the fight and its mechanics on Heroic Difficulty. As such, these videos will show you the Mythic mechanics and focus on the strategy to defeat the Mythic version of the encounter. If you need a refresher on any of the baseline heroic abilities, check out their heroic guide for the encounter on our channel. The Amalgamation Chamber fight basically has one new mechanic for Mythic that comes into play a few different ways. In Phase 1, the Corrupting Shadow and Blazing Heat debuffs, which are the ones applied passively by which add your near, don't expire just like in Heroic. However, if you touch somebody with the opposite debuff, You'll both explode for mild damage within 5 yards, have all of your stacks cleared, and then get a new dot. This new dot is based on whichever debuff you cleared, fire or shadow. Both dots have a 20 second duration, and increase damage taken by that specific school of magic by 10% per stack. You'll deal with these debuffs in both phases. Strategy wise, we recommend a comp of 2 tanks, 4 healers, and 14 DPS. Save lust for phase 2. On pull, just like Heroic, split the raid into two, with half on each side, and keep the bosses apart. If you have any strong multi-dot or spread cleave classes, like say a Warlock or a Boomkin, you'll actually want these players to stand in the middle of the room so they can nuke both bosses. Make sure that the number of people in the center is an even number. If it's not, have a healer stand in the middle as well. They'll all get stacks from both bosses, but the mythic mechanics actually make this easier and it's not really a problem. We'll get to that more in a second. At about 75% health on the bosses, the tanks should taunt swap and bring the adds to the opposite sides. After the swap, you'll want to clear stacks of Corrupting Shadow and Eternal Blaze. To do this, wait until the first stack of the debuff from the new add on your side is applied. Once that happens, find a friend near you and run into them. This will cause you both to explode, clear all of your stacks, and apply the mythic dots to you. For the folks in the middle, you'll want to do the same thing, but more frequently. You should aim to reset yourself every time you reach 6 stacks. Same deal, find a friend, run over them, and your stacks reset, giving you the mythic debuffs. Since you're able to do this, standing in the middle really isn't a huge detriment, and is definitely worthwhile if you're strong with spread cleave or multi-dotting. You should note, though, that these folks will take more damage than the rest of the raid, so make sure the healers are paying attention to them. Aside from that, handle the rest of the mechanics from phase 1 like you do on Heroic. On the shadow side, drop puddles near the walls, move away from the coalescing void, and don't eat the orbs. On the fire side, soak the meteor, soak the small circles, and dodge fire tornadoes. Once either boss reaches 50%, you'll trigger the brief intermission and then start phase 2, so bring the bosses down as evenly as possible. During the intermission, every person will get a small circle around them that explodes when the intermission ends. This will remove all of your stacks of the boss debuffs, but it'll still apply the mythic dots. No biggie, just something to be aware of. Oh, and don't get hit by all the swirlies during the intermission, they do actually kinda hurt on mythic. For phase 2, the mythic change is that the boss periodically casts Shadow and Flame, which will apply either the Fire or Shadow debuff from phase 1 to everybody in the raid. This is random, but it will always be half the raid with each debuff. To handle this, we recommend just finding a partner, running over them, and clearing as soon as possible. You can easily spot a partner, as having the debuffs puts an effect over your head, either Fire or Shadow. Find someone with the opposite effect and just clear as soon as you can. The most dangerous part of this mechanic is actually just the initial application, because it causes everyone to explode for moderate damage within 6 yards. This damage, plus everything else going on, can easily kill you. Your raid leader should call to pre-spread a few seconds before the cast begins. People failing to spread out for this initial application and the explosion is probably the easiest and fastest way for you to wipe during phase 2, so make sure you actually spread out and be careful. Aside from that, Phase 2 really isn't any different than Heroic. Drop puddles near the edges of the room and dodge the tornadoes that come from them. Make sure to soak the small circles, then run away immediately to dodge the orbs. It's actually really easy to get clipped by these, and they deal massive damage, so be careful. Everybody should help soak the meteor, and then use movement abilities to get out. We recommend using a Warlock Gateway for the first of these if you can. 
then a stampeding roar or a windrush totem for the second, and then a gateway again for the third. Tanks will need to swamp after being hit with withering vulnerability, and then make sure to move. Remember, the Shadow Flame Burst is a cone, so don't accidentally get clipped or you'll just die. The healers will want to start rotating cooldowns later in phase 2 as it progresses, because the Shadow Flame contamination stacks start to really hurt after a while. Use personals and health stones as needed to keep yourself stable, new card, and bring down the boss. If you enjoyed this guide, remember to like it and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to catch all of our previews, guides, kill videos, and more. A big thank you again to Kingston Fury for making guides like these possible. From everyone here at Method, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.